Hello and welcome dear viewers to the another topic on scale up and post approval changes. These are known as SUPEC guidelines. Video part 1 and 2 is already available for the SUPEC guidelines for immediate release formulations and mainly on for the solid oral doses forms. So this is part 3. For making this video, the guidance for industry immediate release solid oral doses forms, scale up and post approval changes, chemistry manufacturing and controls, in vitro dissolution testing and in vivo bioequivalence documentation, this guideline is referred. So as we know the drug product development involves basically the four stages starting from research and development, scale up and technology transfer, validation and commercial production and then to the approved product the scale up and post approval changes are done when required or needed. So the fourth part is scale up and approval changes. These are also known as SUPAC and in Europe market the same terminology is known as variation. Now in part 1 we have studied the changes to the components and composition. In part 2 we have studied changes to the site of manufacture and changes to the batch size. Mainly the scale up of the batch size from the pilot scale and in this video in part 3 changes to the manufacturing process and manufacturing equipments will be discussed in detail. So changes to the manufacturing equipments here I have shown v cone blender here it is octagonal blender here it is bean blender here it is double cone blender. So changes to the manufacturing equipments now the level 1 changes change from non automated to or non mechanical equipment to automated or mechanical equipment to move ingredients for example earlier in the product the vacuum transfer system was not there but now the company upgraded from the non mechanical or non automated instrument to mechanical one or automated one so this will come into the level 1 change because there is no major impact for the product. Then change to alternative equipment of same design and operating principle of the same or different capacity. So change to the alternative equipment but the design is same and also the operating principle is same. The equipment may be of different capacity that will come into the level 1 change. So what are the test documentation? As we know for level 1 changes there are no much requirement for the documentation only the chemistry documentation will require application compendial release requirement notification of change and submission of updated batch records so for this cbe is required changes being effected then stability testing is one batch on long term stability there is no specific dissolution documentation required beyond the application or compendial release requirements. That means for CUI generation what is the dissolution required on that basis this change can be completed. There is no requirement of bioequivalence and the filing documentation is done in the annual report for the long term stability. Then level 2 change for the equipments. Now change in the equipment to a different design or different operating principle. Here the design and the operating principle is changed. So test documentation will require chemistry documentation, application compendial release requirements, notification of change and submission of the updated batch records. Then stability testing will be required as it is a level 2 change and there may be an impact on the quality of the formulation. So if significant body of data is available, one batch with three month accelerated stability data reported in supplement. One batch on long term stability data reported in the annual report. Then if the significant body of data is not available and significant body of data means the stability data of the product which is under production. If the data is not available then up to up to three batches with three month accelerated data to be reported into the supplement and three batches on long term stability data are reported into the annual report. Then 
the dissolution will be required with multiple or multi point dissolution profile and it will be a multimedia dissolution profile with dissolution to be performed in water 0.1 normal scl usp buffer media as ph 4.5 6.8 6.5 and 7.5 for the proposed and currently accepted formulations adequate sampling should be there that means multi point dissolution is performed at 15 minutes 30 minutes 45 minutes 60 minutes and 120 minutes until either 90% of the drug is released or a symptom is reached surfactant may be used with proper justification there is no requirement of bioequivalence filing documentation required is pas that is prior approval supplement with justification for the change why because directly here in level 2 change of the equipment principle of the operation is changing that's why pas is required as the level 2 change may have impact on the quality and performance of the product then and in annual report the long term stability data is required to be reported so in equipment level 1 and 2 changes are there then changes to the manufacturing process here the process changes may be level 1 level 2 or level 3 so let's start with that changes to the manufacturing process level 1 process changes including to changes such as mixing times and operating speeds within application or validation ranges so if the product is already uh, has three exhibit batches and now it is into the commercial and in scale up and exhibit batches the blending time was optimized for example i will say the lubrication time optimized up to 7 minutes and the samples were taken at 3 5 and 7 minutes and based on that the lubrication time was finalized 5 minutes for the upcoming production batches and now from these 5 minutes if the applicant wants to decrease or increase the mixing time from 3 from 5 to lower side on 3 or 4 and on higher side from 5 to 6 or 7 then these changes are already within the application validation ranges. So this will be level 1 because the already impact has been studied. That's why the level 1 change will be there if the mixing time or operating speeds of the equipments are within the specified ranges. This is also called as the space for the parameters. So test documentation will be none beyond the application compendial requirements for chemistry documentation. No requirement of dissolution documentation for additional testing. Only the uh, application compendial release requirements will be there like CO generation. No in vivo bioequivalence is required and these changes are required to be reported into the annual report of the product. Then level 2 changes. See here the process changes including changes such as mixing time and operating speeds outside the application or validation ranges. If the validation range for lubrication was from 3 minutes to 7 minutes and now if the applicant wants to increase the lubrication time for 8 minutes or 9 minutes or 10 minutes that time it will fall into the level 2 changes and it will require some more documentation. The chemistry documentation means COA generation, then notification of the change will be required and updated batch records will be required for changes being effected. <laughs> then stability testing requirements will be one batch for the long term stability. Dissolution documentation will be requiring the case B dissolution profile and case B dissolution profile is nothing but a multiple dissolution profile in the application or compendial medium at 15, 30, 45, 60 and 120 minutes or until an asymptom is reached for the proposed and the currently accepted formulation. So multi-point dissolution profile will be required for the product before change and for the after change and the product before change will be a reference product to compare the dissolution. Then Bioequivalence requirement is not there and filing documentation will require changes being effected. 
and long term stability data will be in the stability in the annual report long term stability data is required to be presented in the annual report then level 3 changes here the impact of the uh, manufacturing process change will be much more and complete documentation dissolution and sometimes bioequivalence is also required so level 3 change is the change in the type of process used in the manufacture of the product such as change from the weight granulation to direct compression of the powder so here earlier product was made with weight granulation and now the applicant want to move this weight granulation process to direct compression means blending mixing and compression so many of the time in the life cycle approach of the product the manufacturing process gets changed. For example, from top spray granulation to RMG granulation, so that the manufacturing time is saved, or for the costing reasons, that time it will fall into the category of level 3 change. And test documentation will be required, application compendial release requirements will be there, notification of the change and submission of the updated batch records batch records means the bmrs and it will be changes being effective then stability testing based on the significant body of data availability if the significant body of data is available one batch with three months accelerated stability data reported in the supplement one batch on long-term stability data reported in the annual report then if the significant body of data is not available that means in a simple way you can understand that the product is not much older product it is a comparatively new product and it is in the production and for that the significant body of data that means stability data is not available means much more batches are not there for the stability so up to three batches will be required for three months uh, accelerated stability data and these accelerated stability data for three batches three months will be reported into the supplement and up to three batches on long term stability data reported in the annual report. So, here you can understand that why this long term data is always required to be reported into the annual report because the long term stability data will take much more time compared to the accelerated data. Here you can understand that three months is accelerated and three months long term data is there, but the accelerated stability study is conducted only for six months so three month data if it is given into the supplement it is sufficient with three months data for long term stability studies but if the product is kept on long term stability study at least it will be there for two years and that's why it is required to be reported into the annual report now coming to the test documentation dissolution documentation case b dissolution will be required so in case b dissolution multi point dissolution profile is required in the application or compendial medium means qc medium or qc media with time points of 15 minutes 30 minutes 45 minutes 60 minutes and 120 minutes or until an asymptote is reached for the proposed and the currently accepted formulation that means the old formulation with the older process and the formulation with the change in the process so this will be compared then bioequivalence study in vivo bioequivalence study the bioequivalence study may be weighed if a suitable in vivo in vitro correlation has been verified so here in the process level 3 change the applicant has to perform bioequivalence study and if the IVIVC data is available, that time the bioequivalence study can be waived. Then filing documentation is prior approval supplement with justification that is called as BAS. And annual report will contain or the long term stability data will be reported into the annual report. So in this video we have understood the changes to the equipments mainly and to the process. So whenever there is a level 3 change, the impact of the change will be more. That's why more documentation, more stability data is required 
and generally the changes being effective or PAS is required for level 2 and level 3 changes. However, for level 1 changes, the applicant can do the change, make it effective and report it into the annual report of the product. So, in this video, we have seen the uh, SUPEC basics and SUPEC for changes to the equipments and manufacturing process. So, this SUPEC level questions are generally asked into the interviews. So, every pharma professional should understand these things in detail. Thanks for your continuous support for the channel. Thanks for watching.